So well, guys, you guys don't get a great long video today. I recorded nothing for about three minutes. I said a lot of stuff. <laughs> you did say a lot of stuff. Dusty only gets paid to say it one time, I too. I wish we had a cameraman. <laughs> hey, that's, that's coming up next. <laughs> Maybe, hey, if anybody wants to be our cameraman. Yeah, for the, free. It pays terrible. It pays terrible. You get AC about 30% of the time. We'll give you like one Gatorade, the little ones. The little Gatorades, yeah. So, starting over, this is Cody's car. Pro charge car, it was here a couple months ago. It's tuned on a mix of 93 and E85. Didn't have a sensor on it, so we Did, don't know what was really in it. Yep. Composition wise, but you know, of course, the tune is the tune at that time. As long as you keep the composition the same. Chris had the air fuel dialed in, and then they went up the street for a drivability tune and noticed the fuel pressure was dropping off. There was a fuel pump failure, so he fixed that and it has the dual in tank squash with the return style system. He's using the factory feed line as the return. I will say this, you got everything a lot quicker that time, so that was even better with that, so that's a good job. But yeah, no, that was real good. So Stop calling. <laughs> so now we have a nice sensor on here. We can see, hey, do we have ethanol content? Do we have 93? We can get that dialed in perfectly. And Dusty also did some other work, non, not related to the clutch. He had an aftermarket clutch in here, but he hated it. He did, he had an Exidy Twin in here, and it felt <laughs> terrible, and we when I was digging into it, every clutch kit, they send you two size pilot bearings. One's the small one for the earlier LS cranks and clutches and input shafts, and one's the larger diameter for the later model stuff. Someone had put both of them in this crankshaft, so there was no gap between them to get the puller. It was really a pain, plus... That took some work to get in there, right? Like, they're not so made to fit like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know how. There was, obviously, the, the larger diameter one was pushed a little farther out. Okay. And, um, I, I feel like it was pressing on the uh, input shaft of the transmission slightly, too. So, not ideal at all. Fix that. Now um, it drives great. I mean, I'll admit I've only driven on the dyno, but I've driven a lot of cars on the dyno, and it releases like a stock yeah, one would. We put a Monster Twin, an SC series, the, the higher grip one, um, it, they use a stock pressure plate that's modified for the twin disc, so it feel it has a stock pressure plate feel. The pedal feels great. Yeah, it I felt take great. The, um, over center spring off the clutch, it gives you a steadier pedal the whole way through instead of kind of feeling like that over center at the top. Some people like it, some don't. Of course, I made it so he can put it back in if he doesn't like it. Yeah, before it was like a light switch. It was. He said his wife wouldn't drive it because it was like an on and off switch. I believe it. It was pretty terrible. <laughs> So, but yeah, so he's got a boost reference fuel system, and we, this thing has Deech works. 90s. 90s, right? So it shows the value, the, the, how valuable a yeah. return style boost reference fuel what, system. Yeah, when he comes over here to the numbers, it's going to show it's very valuable. For sure. And so one of the things that I don't really care for is that the ethanol sensor is in the return side. Okay. Of the line, which is fine as long as you are not using all the fuel you're sending. If your fuel system is not up to capacity to the point where you're not returning any fuel at high demand, you're going to starve your ethanol sensor. So oh. if, you do, if you do that on the return side, make sure your fuel system is more than adequate. Than what you need. Yeah. More than adequate. Right, so okay, that's a good point. I never, even, I never even thought about that. Um, the sensors actually flow pretty good, even though it's like a five sixteen. So they flow good. They also make now Racetronics makes one. You can. You, we used to get them on eBay actually, when they were pretty quality. But bypasses where it'll flow half through the sensor and half around it, so you get your full flow. But that, that really don't need that till you get way up in the flow. Just something to think about there to point out. But I have. We have also seen. I think he's at the point also where factory rails. If he's upgrading yeah. injectors, probably some aftermarket rails Pretty too. Sure. Because you're still on a dead end fuel system here. If you look how it's plumbed, and he didn't do anything wrong, this is how you have to do it. But it feeds into here, comes out and goes into the rail, and then returns. So all the fuel from the rail here is dead ended, just yep. like factory. When you do aftermarket rails, you want the regulator to be after the rail. So you want your fuel pump line, the line from the pump, to go in the back of the rail go through the rails, pass all the injectors so it's constantly moving and then regulate it and return okay. it after the fact. That way Makes when sense. your demand increases, the fuel's already in motion. You don't have standstill fuel that has to start moving from a stop. It's like roll racing, right? Correct. 
you're yeah. gonna you're gonna get more speed faster if you're on. on yeah, that's why the there. passenger side would be the side that would, I guess, start. Yeah, maybe. I mean, all the fuel in the rail sitting there. You yeah. Know? So just there's some improvements to be made. But that being said, this car made really good power. We feel like we're close to up against the three core intercooler, which is rated at 800. We don't believe will. Um, the D1, it's the D1SC with helical cut gears, so it's it's got quiet option uh, with a 3.7 upper. So we can do some RPM calculations and kind of see how fast we're spinning it, but it's um, it's getting close. I yeah, I believe so too. Um, it's really close with that, meaning the boost, but here's the other part of it. The boost is still increasing. That's right. We turn it to 7,000 and the boost, it's about 14 pounds of boost, which I'm not sure... Do they really use a boost number or is it more just CFM? It's CFM. Okay. It's the so, power RPM. So, I mean, if you spin that yep. sucker on a four cylinder, line, yeah, it's gonna make then it's going to make more boost. Okay. Like yep, but for sure. That's the number you're going after. If you redline this blower, that's all it's going to do. Whatever it's on, it might make 30 pounds of boost on a four cylinder. It might make 15 on a V8 and the same time. So, yeah, I think we're getting close to this max. We're probably close to the three core max. We and max the we max the injector. So, so we're, we're looking at the fuel rail. Too. At, you take them injectors out. Yeah. That's a tiny little hole. Right? Yeah, there, it's like a. They actually poke like a hole in there. <laughs> yeah. You know the other thing we're probably on the edge of. What? The stock bottom end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fact. This is a stock bottom end motor with heads and cam. Yep. Or, Aftermarket heads, cam. He thinks it's never been a part on the bottom end. It makes great power. I mean, for the boost. I mean, 14 pounds of boost, it, you were good over here to the numbers here yeah, now. Yeah. But I mean, it's making really good power. The, the three numbers up here are where it came in today on a 95 degree day on pure 93, no ethanol at all, was 725 and 633. Of course, you know, you put in that ethanol, we picked up 100 horsepower. Yeah. And the first run on E was... I'm sorry, the first run was like 779, so we picked up 70 horsepower, which, which is, is exactly 10%. 10%, we always say. <laughs> the green line is no, no filter. filter. That's another way you can sometimes tell that your blower is reaching its efficiency range. Right? Yep, when you pull the filter, because this filter is not the biggest thing around, you pull that, and we did gain a little bit, but we didn't gain any boost, though. Right. It just gained power. It just gained a little power. Okay, so that's not, I didn't think about that. She's getting the air, you know, it's getting air. And we pulled the filter, we made 823, 678. So, substantial gains. I mean, that's 100 horsepower over where we came in at. That's what, about 12, 13%, I'm guessing? Yeah. So. And this graph, this is our fuel pressure we talked about that we're able to log. As you can see, it increases as boost increases because the regulator's boost reference one to one. So. We pick up a pound of boost, we get a pound of fuel pressure. That lets the injector with the injector seize on the bottom side overcome that boost pressure. Yep. So you, you retain more of your volume. That's why these, if this was a stock fuel system, even if it stayed at 58 mm. PSI the whole run, it's never going to make this. No, not even close. So having your fuel system dialed in for the power you're going to make a, right off the bat is so important. Yeah, I think, I think this guy's goal or need... We need to leave it as it is, because everything right now, if, if you go up for another 30, 40 horsepower, you're changing everything. For sure. This isn't one of like, hey, just do this. You're, yeah. you're done. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do injectors. I wouldn't do rails. I wouldn't do any of that. I would build this motor. Yep. I would build a motor first. at the same time. And then you could do either a D1X. You know anybody that's going to put one of those on anything? I don't know. I might know a guy. Or an F1, but I think a D1X, what's the... Difference in power on those is it? I guess the X is in between this and the F. Yeah, it's not huge. The X has got a different impeller oh, okay. than, than the SC, so it's a little more, a little more increased flow. We'll see. Okay. I mean, we'll find yeah, out. we'll see. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna, gonna do that. On we're gonna do one course. of those next. And um, we're also, like you were talking about, is looking at uh, the next uh, intercooler options. Yeah, for sure. Because we're seeing now, the more we push these blowers, the higher the IET difference from the beginning of the run to yeah, the end. You definitely start to see that. And now again, it's 90 plus. You get, the reason that they don't offer, so that like a Camaro, a fifth gen Camaro, they yes. offer a thousand horsepower sheet metal race intercooler option. Okay. They all require a little bit of work, but on the G8s, there's not enough room 
in front of the factory crash bar. Oh. And just, you run out of room. So you end up doing something tubular, seriously hacking it up, doing a, I've got a Turbo Joe um, bumper support, you know, for mine to grow. The other thing that we do that nobody else is doing is, and my car is gonna have it, we use this main bracket piece, not, not all the components, just literally this backbone that the blower bolts to, we use out of uh, the SS bracket and we modify yep. it so that the power steering pump puller boss, the little guy on the end will fit through the bracket because of course the SS is electric power steering. So okay. Don't have it. So what that does is it clocks this blower up and in slightly. I don't okay. know why they don't just kind of have the same bracket for both cars. Because you get the G8 the bracket and modify, or no, you get an SS, SS bracket, bracket modified, modified for this. What that allows you to do is if you want to do an F-Series blower in the future or if you're doing it at the same time, because it clocks it up and in, it clears the strut tower. You don't have to beat on it. People, you know, mm. on the thing stuff. And anyway, it lets you run an F-Series blower, no modifications. I'm pointing this out because we have all this stuff kind of figured out in a recipe. The F-Series blower also sticks the pulley out about 85 thousandths farther, so we mill the pulleys 100 to compensate for a little bit of bracket flex and move it in. So we got the recipe on these things. If you're doing one from scratch with us, and you want to grow into it later, we've got some recommendations for you. This still has the stock Pro Charger lower, which is seven inches. Um, at this boost level and this RPM, that would be a good time when they, you know, when you build this motor to go ahead and do the ATI LSA lower with our blower spacer in the blower okay. room to kind of beefing that up. Yeah. Plus, we can run a larger lower that's gonna let you get a little more belt wrap up here. Yeah, these brackets are really good for not slipping. This pulley setup is pretty stout. And like you said, that we've done so many pro charge setups in the last few years, like which I'm glad because I I like pro chargers. So I, I like totals. I like <laughs> we have done so many setups uh, like this. We have another truck. We have another G8. We have a Corvette and Dusty's car all getting pro charge setups coming. Hey, ugly. So we really have like how much horsepower do you want? And how much do you want to spin your car? We can get you a setup that's going to make the power. Tell us what your goals are. We've got a good recipe. Um, yeah, I like that. We're working on two. On we're, we're using my car kind of to test bed. Oh yeah. We're doing a um, a fuel system. Yep. We're going to have a fuel system that kind of fits that recipe. Like, hey, I want 900, 1,000 horsepower. Cool. Um, we're doing the radium bucket in my car with two. We're going to do a 455, 25 pump. Yep. Um, that means the second pump will come on on a hop switch with boost. But we're gonna get the lines, figure out, you know, the length of lines, which fittings, the regulator, mounting. We're gonna have kind of like, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't call it a kit, because you're gonna have to assemble the lines and fittings, but here you go, here's your fuel system for your G8, this will support you. Yep. Along with a, a wiring harness, back to relays. So, um, it'll be, you know, we're doing it for our builds, but it's something that we can offer people, you know, and kind of know what they need as far as uh, lines and fittings and things. Yeah, because the, horsepower of the builds we're doing i think it's like everything right get more and more we already have a good 400 horsepower package you know 450 wheel we can get you that pretty easy we can get you 550 wheel 650 700 800 so now yeah. everybody wants four digits we can find we're gonna get some ls four digit bolt-on power now that, don't get me wrong i think for you coming in with a stock motor yeah this is all you need and you leave with 800 plus at the wheel that's nasty <laughs> and you know the, what we've run up against in the last couple of, of builds has been fuel system yeah there's a huge we me and chris talk about all the time there's a huge monetary discrepancy between i want to make 700, 700 yep and i want to make 800 huge ton because we can get by with a stock end tank and a dsx aux with a 320 pump and that'll on the 85 now, that'll get you, you know, 700 pretty yeah. reliably. Once you start getting over 700, things go downhill pretty fast. Really fast. Especially on a G8 where you don't have the 80 PSI mechanical Yeah, regulator. you do the SS's, you can get away with a little bit more. So there's that big gap in between the 1,000 horsepower people and the 700 horsepower. Yeah. So this is right, this is like just above the 700. We got the fuel system on this one. Yeah. The injectors, the rails, I think would complete this and get him to where it could be, you know, a reliable yeah, 850. But there again, the, the rods and pistons, you know. yeah, that's yeah. There again, I think for this amount of horsepower, uh, 
this is all I would want on stock. But I mean, we also have one. A lot of people like his car on the channel. It's that other straight drive yep, SS. Good. He is hell bent all of a sudden on just seeing if he can make a thousand. Yeah. And so stock bottom in now. Stock bottom in. It's never been off that thing. So stock. It's got a cam. And you put a lower on there already. Yep. I did a quick street tune because he just put another cam in it. And it's making two pounds of boost more than it was. Yeah, so he and we already had to limit him by RPM. That's right. He went from our he went from a stock pro charger lower, seven inch lower, to our ATI setup with a seven eight, which is as small of a lower as you can buy. And I think he had what a four upper. I think four inch upper. So yeah. A seven eight is a stock LSA lower size. That's so with that size. probably more boost in this setup would put right seven eight with a four. Yeah. yeah. Because you said the the, four, the bottom makes bigger difference. The bottom is less different. Oh, less difference. Okay. You have to work, do the math. You can do. The yeah, math we'll get. I'll do the math and get some chart. I'll get a chart set up here in the next couple of weeks, so yeah, I will have it. That'd be good. Close. It's probably. I think it's like three to four tenths of an inch on the bottom is one tenth on the top. I can tell you though, he needs to just go ahead and get a good fuel. Oh, actually, he is. We're gonna try since he does have an SS to put the new DSX pump on his. That's right. Because he the the one. I mean, we had an SS in here made eight fifty with a the twenty six fifty. Stock pump and a 2650. I'm sorry, yeah, stock pump and a new DSX, and it held. A, it had 70 plus pounds of fuel pressure the whole run. Yeah, so it might be worth a shot. We're gonna try it because it's now, cheap. I mean, it's it's 120, 30 bucks. I do. We just gotta say one when you come in here. I hope you know you're okay with towing your car back. Oh, home. He's signing the waiver. <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, but I think we should go ahead and do a three seven upper, the lower he has on it, and then do like you know five thousand, six thousand, and then just keep moving RPM up yeah. and seeing what it likes. Because why I have to keep pulling it down? Start aggressive. Yeah. Do you know what cam is in this? I do not know what cam is in here. We'll, we'll find out. We'll come and put in the thing. Juan just went to the new BTR four. P, uh, centrifugal. Just that, no, they're all motor BTR4 version, version, two. version two. He had the four version one, right? Yes. Because it was big. We were like, this is an NA cam. Of course, NA cams seem to work pretty well. But like, you yeah. Know, BTR's red hot cam is their NA stage two, PDS stage two, and triple stage two. Same thing as that. Yep. I saw somebody post that they think the PDS is slightly different or the centrifugal. I have to find that post. I don't know. I think they're the same. It's not. So. That's why it's a red hot. You can put that thing in everything. So, this one, uh, it's good. We're gonna, I'm going to go do a very quick jaunt uh, on the street. Literally just to check uh, AFRs to probably 5,000, 5,500, and lower his rev limiter mm -hmm. and send them. Because I don't want this thing turning 73, 7,400 RPM at this air fuel. Or just get into the edge. Yeah, we had, what, 70%, 60 percent ethanol? Oh yeah, about 67, yeah, 67. So, so some good stuff, it's gonna tap the rest of the fuel system. Real quick. So, so yep, until next time, I know this will be a long one guys, but I think we got a lot of good pro charger information on this one and yep. where we're going, Everything so. you never wanna know in five minutes. <laughs> some people do wanna know. <laughs> but anyways, thanks guys. See ya.